Okay. Um, well, first of all, welcome back in Poland. Uh, we know that you are not here for the first time. Um, what can you say about Polish fans? How do they react to your music? Well, like you said, this is uh, we, we've, we've been here before, but only once, and we played Warsawa, and then um, that was a great experience. It was one of the hottest shows we ever we ever played. It was really hot. I remember that, but the crowd was really great. And since we never played here before, it was like you never know when you come into a new territory, you know. But uh, it was awesome. The reaction was just great. Hopefully, it's going to be the same tonight. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, we would like to know something about your gear. Um, what guitars, amps, and effects do you use? Um, well, it, it, the whole setup is a little bit different. We've been going through, as far as guitars go, their Ibanez custom made eight strings. Mm -hmm. So we got a we got a couple of them, different varieties. We tried out versions of them, but the ones we use now live are the I think they're the second ones we've got. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Ibanez and those are um, their neck through I think it's 30 and a half inch scale or 31 inch scale on it it's got ebony fretboard uh, it's m largely made up of alder but I'm not 100% sure that it's only alder in the body but it's like you know and, and the pickups are Lundgren from Sweden and um, I think it's not a pro age uh, it's, it's like the old uh, pretty much the old school um, Ibanez uh, Floyd Rose uh, but fixed bridge mm -hmm. so because we wanted the fine tuning and everything so so but um, those are the ones we've been using you know and um, we um, are actually trying out some new guitars right now we, we were getting them when we get home now so we'll see what those are like but these are the ones we're using right now okay, great um, Obzen was released almost a year and a half ago. What do you think about it now, about the album? Uh, we're we're pretty happy with it. I think. I, I mean, personally, I think that most of the time when I when we release an album, I don't listen to it for years. Just, not deliberately. It's just that you know, whenever you write something, you're so focused on writing the album, then you record it, and you're focused on recording it, then you go out touring it and playing the new shit live, and you just focus on that. I don't sit down and listen to Obzen and like, okay, how did it turn out? That'll happen in a year maybe or something like that. But uh, the reaction on the, to the album generally has been really awesome. So we're happy with that. But, and we're also happy that we we kind of wanted to do a certain thing. We wanted to keep it interesting for us, but still like, you know, reintroduce some of the old school influences and make it into something new because you'd like take the new Meshuggah and a little bit of the old school influences mm -hmm. and then you merge it and see what it kind of, you can come up with. And I think that the album is, is a lot like that. So we're satisfied. All right, great. And um, how about the plans on recording a new one? Uh, the way it looks right now, you know, this business, things change pretty rapidly depending on stuff. But the way it looks right now is that we're doing these summer festivals. Yeah. We go back home and fin do the finishing touches on our live DVD that we're planning to release, uh, hopefully before the end of the year. But I'm not, I haven't seen a really, you know, a real release date so far. But we're going to do the finishing touches on that and look at, like, you know, how that is going. And then we're going to start writing. So I guess in you know, September or something, maybe we're writing again. So knowing Meshuggah, it'll take a year after that before the album comes out at least. But uh, we're just about to shift focus from playing live to, you know, yeah. getting back into writing mode. Great. Um, you are known for a very mechanical and technical type of playing. When you started to think about music in that way? I still haven't started to think about music that way because... Even though, even though the expression, I, I mean, it is sort of mechanical and machine-like and very static in, in many ways. So, uh, in that respect, I agree. Uh, but we have never thought of us doing anything else than just playing music. That it happens to be the way it sounds is more, you know, when, when you get inspiration, this is mostly what we write. That's kind of a natural process you come up with stuff you think sounds cool and you know but the the funny thing is that people always choose to focus on the technical aspect and the machine like aspect and it's there it's like pretty it's pretty um 
it's pretty set like that. But it, 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 on the other hand, when we approach music, we try to make stuff that just, you know, it, it, we want it to groove. Even though it's odd and like a little bit off, we still want it to be songs that groove but keep them interesting. So the focus is not on being machine-like or precise. It's about playing the parts the way it feels like we should, you know, to keep the momentum up. And I guess, you know, you always come back to the fact that it's really hard to explain why you do what you do. It's very hard. It's like you, I go, okay, you're breathing. Cool. How do you do it? I just do it. Yeah, but explain how how do you do it? <laughs> you you know it, it's like yeah you know it, it's it, it's pretty hard, and it and it's not exactly like that, but it's kind of like that to explain what what because it's like you sit down and you get ideas and that's what comes out and then you mess around on the guitars and oh cool I gotta record this this sounds killer, and it okay there it is you know and we just happen I guess we're guys who are attracted to that type of thing.